హలో ఎవరి వన్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై ఛానల్ ఇన్ఫిటెక్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో వే గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ సంథింగ్ అబౌట్ గోల్డెన్స్ కంకరెన్సీ సో పర్టికులర్లీ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ అబౌట్ వర్కర్ పుల్ ప్యాటర్న్ విచ్ ఈస్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ కంకరెన్సీ ఫీచర్ సో ఫస్ట్లీ we what we are going to see is uh, we are going to understand this worker pull pattern using an example and we are also going to see how is it different from a sequential uh, processing so basically sequential processing is one uh, sort of pattern in programming and concurrent processing is another uh, form of processing in computing so basically concurrency is the key feature of golang before we start discussing about concurrency or any worker pull pattern so first let's see what is the example which we are going to see today so it is quite simple so i have taken this data.csv file so basically this csv file is going to have 1 million records so each record is going to have an id name email and age okay so we have this is a very huge file uh, this file is around 45 mb and there are around so let me go to the end of the file so yeah so as you can see there are 1 million records in this file and now today we are going to see how can we process this large data set i mean this is a uh, file we are going to see how Uh, how much time it is going to take to process this file in sequential approach versus how much time it is going to take to process this file in concurrency approach using the worker pull pattern so if you go to the main.go file i have already kept the sequential code uh, ready so to keep this video shorter uh, we are going to understand what is the sequential approach basically i have this main function okay so i have this data.csv file which has 1 million records so this i am firstly i'm going to open this uh, csv file and also checking if there are any uh, errors in opening this file and and last i'm not forgetting to close this file because i have opened it and there is this csv reader so this reader will be responsible to read all the records or rows which are present in the csv file and if there are any errors i'm handling it so basically i'm recording the start time of the uh, process okay now let's see i have this records okay with me so this records is going to be a slice so since the first line is going to be the header uh, let me show you so first row is simply the header not the actual data i'm going to skip the uh, first row and start taking all the other rows from one to the end of the slice so for each record i iterate so basically this is the single record i get in every iteration i am going to fetch the age of that particular user so i'm going to take record of 3 which is nothing but age 0 1 2 3 so and i'm going to convert that into uh integer so if there is any errors i'm handling it and afterwards i have this job struct which has id name email and age according to the data.csv so i'm going to convert this integer into alphanumeric and i'm going to form a job struct and for each record i'm calling this method which is process job so this process job is nothing but it is going to take some uh 10 microseconds to for each record so this program will take 10 microseconds for each record in this excel sheet so that t will be equal to 1 million into 10 microseconds so that is going to be the program execution time so 1 million into 10 microseconds so that is the time we print here so time taken to execute uh, without concurrency is what we are printing out so basically uh, let's see so this program will call a function for each and every row using a simple for loop, for loop. so basically this we call it as uh, sequential execution now let me try to run this program and see what is the time taken to execute this program okay so this is the time taken to execute to process those 1 million records which is 15.4 seconds so 15.4 seconds is the time to process 
those 1 million records excel file using the simple sequential approach now let us see the same example same file and how can we reduce this uh, execution time using concurrency with the help of the worker pool pattern now let me first tell you what exactly is worker pool pattern so basically worker pool pattern is something where we are going to initially create some x number of workers and there is going we are going to create one more channel called jobs channel so that particular jobs channel will be uh, we see let's say we are getting some n number of jobs for us to process so we will be pushing those n number of jobs to this jobs channel and all these workers let's say we are creating a five workers in our program to process this one million record data file so this each every worker will keep on listening to that job channel which in our case is going to be one million um, jobs so all those five workers will concurrently keep on listening to the job channel and each worker will uh, uh, take some time to execute each and every record so that is how simple it is a work worker pool pattern there are going to be some x number of workers all those x number of workers together are going to execute those n number of jobs so that's what we are going to use the pattern which we call it as worker pool pattern and with the uh, which is part of this concurrency feature and see how we can reduce this execution time from 15 seconds to whatever time we get okay now uh, so we will going to tweak this program only to convert this program into a worker pool pattern so firstly as i told earlier we are going to create a job channel so okay and okay here i am going to create two variables uh, once again where so first variable is going to be the jobs channel and I am going to create a channel out of it and the channel type is going to be the job okay we, we already have this job struct so the type to our job channel is obviously going to be the type and some size like I am giving 100 and I am also creating a weight group and I am calling it as sync using sync package i am creating this weight group so i'll tell you why are we using this weight group in our uh, worker pool pattern once we have created the uh, job channel now our task is to go ahead and start spinning out the worker so all this remains same we are going to open the csv file we are going to read it and after that okay what we are going to do is we are going to create our workers so these workers let's say number of workers are going to be five in our case and so immediately we have the total number of workers with us let us create a worker pool now let me create a function which says create worker pool okay so this create worker pool will take the number of workers number of workers of type int and it is going to return nothing so okay now for each i'm going to iterate through the total number of workers i'm going to say okay for each worker i am going to say so yeah you have now you have to go start working right so let's say while i am creating this worker okay so we basically we have five workers with us now we have our program should wait until all these five workers complete their jobs okay so once all the workers are free then we are good to say that our program has completed execution okay so that's where uh, what we are going to do is we are telling uh, our weight group for each worker you keep uh, incrementing and once the worker has been created you go start your work with the available jobs in the 
job channel okay now i'm spinning a go routine okay so this worker is going to be a go routine now i'm going to remove this process job so instead of this process job i'm going to say function worker and i'm going to receive the worker id okay so each and every worker which is going to be created here will get called here and this worker's job is to um, start listening for this job channel so we have the job channel right so we can say i am listening to the job channel and let's say for each job we are taking some 10 microseconds time to execute like how we did in our previous uh, program so let's say you can maybe for each and every record you can uh, send an email for that user saying that welcome to our platform or something like that it's a real time use case scenario okay now we are not using this job in our anywhere in the our loop so and also so once this worker has completed uh, is responsibilities then we are going to decrement the uh, the counter which we added while creating the worker so while creating we are incrementing the weight group and once the worker has completed all his responsibilities then we are decrementing at the end of the function okay now we have this number of workers now our task is to call this create worker pool function and pass in the number of workers okay now once we have started creating our workers our next task is to start pushing pushing jobs to our job channel so now we see we do not have any jobs into this job channel now we have to push all this uh, 1 million records into the job channel so that all those jobs are available for all the five workers which we did previously okay now it's simple we are going to create a go routine which in works immediately and put in this same code okay where i am saying uh, map through all those records in that excel file convert that age integer to string okay convert it to struct and now what you have to do is instead of calling process job for every record you have to send that record to the job channel right so yeah so once you are good uh, with um, doing all those things pushing all those 1 million jobs to your job channel your responsibility is to close the jobs channel okay we have closed this job channel and what else we need to do i think uh, yeah that's all time taken with concurrency okay now let's see what will be the time okay so now we we have this wait group right so uh, why did we create this wait group so that our main function will wait under all the workers which are associated this wait group have completed execution okay uh, okay wait let us print something okay no let's not print maybe we can do something like this yeah this wait group should wait until all the workers have completed doing the jobs now let us run and see if there are any other uh, errors or not yeah so it is working as expected see now you can see the time taken to execute this program with concurrency is just 3.07 seconds whereas without concurrency using sequential approach it is 15.47 seconds okay so we have this simple uh, go routine which invokes automatically and we are going to create a worker pool okay all these five workers will be waiting for all the jobs in this job channel and in this go routine we are going to push all the 1 million jobs to that job channel so that all of the our five workers will be waiting and start spinning go routines uh, so using this pow powerful feature of golang which is nothing but the concurrency and worker pool pattern is a part of concurrency there are so many other patterns like fan in fan out etc 
but using this workable pattern we were able to execute this last data file of 1 million records we are going to process let's say each process time is 10 microseconds or it could be some 10 milliseconds in your case like sending an email to the particular user so we are going to process this um, 1 million data file assuming that each record takes 10 microseconds to process and our uh, time total time taken is 3 seconds so that's all uh, for this video thank you for watching